Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining me. You know, I was just sitting down to have a have a cup of tea, and I thought, why not go ahead and and uh, film uh, my responses to the jet lag tag? Um, I was tagged by uh, Richardson Reads on this recently, and the original tag was done by B. M. Gregory, and so I've been sort of thinking about my responses to this tag all day, and um, so I just thought I would quickly run through them. So um, let's get a sip of tea. The theme of the tag is about jet lag, you know, um, and so actually for work, I have to travel historically right now, not so much, but um, usually, um, typically anyway, I travel quite frequently, at least around the, the U.S., um, so like last year, I was pretty much monthly, I would go for a few days to Boston, uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Lincoln, Nebraska, Seattle, Washington, and Sacramento, California um, on a monthly basis. And I did that for about a year and a half for those locations. And um, over the course of years, you know, it's really changed. I've really been sort of all over the U.S. Uh, right now, my, my travel schedule is not so bad. You know, I, I, I live in the D.C. area, so I, I mostly now have to travel just the D.C. Baltimore area as well as up to Philadelphia, which is a short train ride, a couple hours of train ride. So I don't consider that really travel. Um, but, um, you know, nevertheless, traveling um, has has been a part of my life. Um, I have traveled a bit internationally also um, and been around to a few places. Um, I've been to um, Israel and Jordan and Germany and Austria and Switzerland and uh, England and Scotland and Argentina, Mexico, um, you know, still on my list. I've never been to Canada, oddly enough, although I was just in Detroit yesterday because um, I do periodically still need to go outside of my, my normal area. So yesterday I had a work trip and I was in Detroit. I could see Canada over there across the river, but I've actually never been to Canada. So that's still on my list of things to do is go visit our northern neighbor. Um, my other big trip that I would love to do is go to Portugal and um, Cape Verde which is an island of Africa. Um, so I've never been anywhere on the continent of Africa. So that's still on my, on my to-do list. I've been to Istanbul, uh, Turkey, and Greece. Um, so anyway, um, done quite a bit of traveling. But on to the tag. So there's five questions on the tag. The first question is a book that made you tired. So, you know, this one actually took me the longest to decide how to respond to. I decided to respond to it with really two works. One is Ilium uh, by Dan Simmons. I read this um, last, I think it was the beginning of last year. Um, this is a science fiction work. And you know, I was so excited about this book because it has everything in it that I would normally love. Um, it has time travel. It's a science fiction, like I said, time travel. It also has a far future human component, like a post-human component. It has time travel uh, back to like the Trojan War, lots of Greek gods and Greek mythology. It's got, you know, kind of wisecracking artificial intelligence um, that likes Shakespeare. Um, so it's just got everything that I like, you know, and when I was reading through the book, you know, it's, it just, um, I just found it really sexist really in its treatment of women. Um, I did a video on this. I'll link to it below. It's not one of my more popular videos, obviously, because um, I think this book has a lot of fans. Dan Simmons has a lot of fans. Um, but by the time I was finished with it, you know, I was so disappointed because I was really expecting sort of a, a different experience than the one I wound up getting. Um, I won't go into it other than to say that it just sort of left me feeling disappointed and, and tired. And then I wanted to respond with another video, which is another one of my kind of least popular um, things. This is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. I heard, you know, in 2015, I heard this rumor, they're going to do um, uh, a series called The Expanse. There's the cover again. And, you know, it's based on these novels. There's like, I think there's maybe five of them, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't read those. I was so excited. I saw a pre-trailer, you know, for the series. And so it looks so good. So I thought I'm going to set a goal and I'm going to read all of these before the series starts. So um, I, I got this first one, you know, and while I didn't hate it, I just didn't get pulled in to um, the, one of the main premises of the story is a conflict 
in our solar system. This is another science fiction work. Um, and I don't know, I somehow I just never bought into that conflict. It didn't feel real to me. It didn't feel believable to me. Um, and so I just, I was just another one, you know, that I had been looking forward to. I was planning on just binge reading this whole series, and it wound up I didn't read any more past the first one. Although, you know, I haven't watched the series, but I get a lot of good good feedback from people who have and really like the series. So I'm thinking the series might be better, so I'm going to probably end up trying out the series, and, and maybe I'll enjoy the series a little bit more than, um, I, than, I, than I enjoyed the books. The, the Leviathan Wakes book chat was the very first book chat I ever did. I'll link to it below. It's not one of my better book chats, um, but um, nevertheless, uh, it'll be there in case you're interested in hearing more about what I what I thought about it. Um, all right, so the second question. Um, a book that made you confused, because, you know, I think with, with traveling a lot of times, you know, we, we end up a bit dazed and confused. So my answer to this, um, let me get the cover for you pulled up. Um, cause I read it electronically. Um, been a couple of years now. It's called The Quantum Thief, and this is by, uh, Hanu Rajaniam, Rajaniemi, I think, Rajaniemi. I, I'm probably mispronouncing the last name, but The Quantum Thief. This is actually really good. Um, it's just that you're dropped into this future human world, it's a post-human world, so humans aren't even really what we would recognize as human anymore. Um, and you sort of just dropped them in this world, this in, in this time period. And this is our own solar system in the far future. Um, and so there's terminology, there's technology. Um, the humans can do things like shield themselves for privacy, because uh, otherwise they're automatically exchanging information with each other. Um, and the tale is actually a thief. Um, you know, it's a heist kind of story. The story itself is really good. And, and you know, doing this exercise and thinking of this book again um, really made me decide, you know, maybe think about reading, re giving this book a reread in December, putting this on my rereading list. Because I've always had it in the back of my mind that, you know, I really need to reread that. Because when I finished it the first time, I was just like, okay, I enjoyed that, but I'm not quite sure what happened. So, <laughs> yeah. So, question three. Um, um, let's see, what's the question? A book that opened your eyes to a whole new world. You know, Richardson Reads brought up Joseph Campbell's, uh, series that he did, um, back, um, in the either late 70s or early 80s, and I loved that series too. I had a book, uh, Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces, I read uh, a couple of times. So I love that. Love that response by Richardson Reeves. But my own response um, is the first one I'm going to mention, uh, it's another double response really, is Whole. Uh, this is um, Whole Rethinking the Science of Nutrition uh, by T. Colin Campbell, PhD. Uh, T. Colin Campbell is actually um, was a, is a retired professor now, but uh, at the time is professor of uh, nutritional biochemistry at Cornell in in New York. Um, so, in um, twenty, and this book came out around in twenty thirteen, um, early twenty thirteen, I decided to become vegan. You know, just for an ethical to sort of match my ethical philosophy, and you know, the planning that I, that I went into for that took about one second. It was a a spur of the moment kind of thing where I decided I was going to give it a 30 day try. Um, and you know, it's something that really stuck with me, but it really caused me back then to really go on this whole new food journey because I needed to relearn, um, what was food and, you know, food, food eating patterns and what to eat and things like that. And it was all a great, exciting adventure and still really is. But one of the books I picked up at that time was this book whole, because this was about, you know, nutrition. And so that was really on my mind at the time and still, is um, but what it is is it really changed the way that I view nutrition uh, because what he's arguing in this book is you know to move beyond the reductionist sort of paradigm that most of science has had as, as well as nutrition um, and so where this comes to play is like for example on the back of your food you know you have this little short thing that says the amount of 
fiber, the amount of vitamin A, the amount of vitamin C. Um, and that's just a tiny, tiny microscopic amount of the nutrients that are in, for example, an apple. And so most people, you know, they automatically go to, oh, that food's high in vitamin C. But an apple's actually got hundreds, if not thousands of phytochemicals, some of which aren't even known or understood. And so really, you know, he's arguing that nutrition needs to be thought of holistically. And so that's really colored, you know, how I've how I've viewed nutrition ever since and really have to catch myself thinking, you know, oh, protein, and that's a, that's a reductionist idea of protein or, um, you know, vitamin C um, because it's really just not, it's not even a really part of the, the really big picture of nutrition. So, also, and then the second book I wanted to mention is actually, um, I no longer own, but I, I downloaded a picture of it just so that we would, um, oops, have, so you'd have a copy of it, um, but it is The Ancestor's Tale by Richard Dawkins. Here is the cover. Oops, scroll to it. The Ancestor's Tale, A Pilgrimage to the Dawn of Evolution. So um, this book changed my entire concept of what it means to be human and to fit in with the rest of life on Earth. Because this is written in sort of the style of the Canterbury Tales, only we're in a genealogy going backwards. So we start with us today, humans. We meet up with our previous, you know, humanoid-type ancestors from the past. Then we meet up with our ancestor with the ne our next closest relative, you know, um, I think it's, um, it seems like it's the bonobos, then the chimpanzees, the apes. goes all the way back to all the, you know, dolphins, and so we meet each, each, um, each chapter covers, uh, and it's worded like this, it'll be like the dolphin's tail. It'll pick an animal, you know, and then we'll show how we're related to them, and, or even plants, eventually, or it was in the edition, this is a newer edition that's kind of changed, but, um, how we're related, how humans are, you know, related, and when, when we can say we had a common ancestor. Because if you do de genealogy, you realize that, you know, as you go back, you get more and more relatives because people share the same ancestors the further and further you go back. And then whenever you've actually gone so far back that you're no longer a homo sapien, then that's our common ancestor with that other group of living beings. So that really changed my whole view of life and how it works and how I fit into it, life on earth. Um, number four, a book that made you feel sick. So yeah, this is another one I no longer own. Um, it's actually a very good book, but it's just Really grim. The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Um, this book left me so tired, or so um, nauseous, <laughs> tired and nauseous. Um, it's, you know, it's a dystopia. They made a movie about it, um, but the book is just bleak. It's beautifully written, and it's got beautiful sentiments in it. Um, as this sort of father and son sort of sojourn through a ruined uh, world. Um, but yeah, that one, that one left me, <laughs> left me nauseous for sure. Um, then number five, the book you read on your last j long journey. So, um, you know, my last long journey, I, I mentioned I haven't really been doing that many journeys. Um, my last really journey was yesterday, but I don't consider Detroit that long, far away. But I did used to go, like I mentioned, um, to California, and the last time I went there was earlier this year. Um, so what I I looked back to see what I happened to be reading at that time because one thing is I don't plan my books um, based on travel. I just ha I happened to be reading it. So uh, that was Conversations with the Future. I was reading this when I did my last trip. These are essays around uh, futurists from not essays but interviews, transcripts of interviews with various futures and futurists, um, you know, about their, what they think the future might hold in their given fields of study. And then um, the last international trip I took was to Istanbul and Athens, and I looked back just out of curiosity to see what I was reading on that trip, because I didn't remember, and I was reading Mind in Cosmos by uh, Thomas Nagel, Why the Materialist Neo-Darwinian Conception of Nature is Almost Certainly False. And this is another sort of criticism of reductionism, sort of like Hole was, uh, the nutrition book. Um, but this book uh, really examines, you know, like the need for uh, to move beyond really the, the sort of scientific uh, Darwinian 
uh, reductionist sort of theory from that we've been working off of for the last few hundred years and into something a little more, uh, a little different, which he's not sure what will be at this point. So read that on my last international trip. That's it. I'm going to stop with that. I'm not quite sure who to, who has done this tag. I've been really kind of busy for work, so I'm behind on my videos. Biblio Atlas, if you haven't done this tag, I'd love to hear your responses. But really, anybody who um, sees the tag and thinks it'd be fun, um, I'd love to hear your response. Or just comment below what your responses would be down in my comments. I'd appreciate hearing from you. Okay? Take care.